Hi everyone. So today we are going to talk about a very important topic on a treatment of acute pancreatitis with the help of a mnemonic. Let's get to it. The mnemonic is fluids and nutritional management can be vital. So from fluids, as you know, we need IV fluids for these patients, A for analgesics that we need, and for no antibiotic, uh, D for diuretics if we need to, and nutritional is for nutrition, management is for monitoring, can be for the cause management, and vital is for vital monitoring. To understand the treatment of acute pancreatitis, we have to go through the pathophysiology. The first thing that happens is acute insult that can be in the form of alcohol, gallstones, trauma, drugs, high triglyceride levels, or hypercalcemia. What does that do? It leads to the cell injury in the pancreas and leads to the ATP depletion. And when there is a cell injury, it leads to the activation of macrophages and neutrophils. And the inflammation causes increased vascular permeability. Because of that, there is third spacing of fluids and patient also develop nausea and vomiting. The patient develop hemoconcentration with high hematocrit and bun levels. Okay, let's understand the treatment from the pathophysiology. Uh, from the acute insult, we know anything that causes acute insult, like alcohol, gallstones, we need to address the underlying cause. And from cell injury and ATP depletion, we need a nutrition for the patient. And after that, you know, the inflammation comes in and uh, it causes pain, abdominal pain, we need the analgesics. And when there is a third spacing of fluids and vomiting and volume loss, we need IV fluid. After the loss of IV fluids, the patient develops hemoconcentration, like high hematocrit and bone levels. So we need to monitor hematocrit bone levels and along with the clinical monitoring. So let's go step by step. The first and for most important thing in patients with acute pancreatitis is IV fluids. This is the only proven treatment of acute pancreatitis patients. So who does the IV fluid help in these patients? So you know when there's acute pancreatitis, it causes the pancreatic tissue to get inflamed and it compromises the microcirculation of the pancreas. By compromising the microcirculation, it can cut off the blood supply to the pancreas pancreatic tissue and can increase the chances of pancreatic necrosis. So pro by providing the IV fluid, we maintain the microcirculation of the pancreas and prevent it from necrosis. So the preferred fluid is LR according to the recent trials. Uh, there, are there are a few reasons we need to understand. Uh, there have been studies between LR and normacilline. The normacilline increases the risk of systemic inflammatory response syndrome or SIRS and as you know the normacilline is an acidic fluid with a pH of 5.5. In some experimental studies this acidic pH leads to the activation of trypsinogen and can further aggravate uh, the pancreatitis. So ringer lactate is preferred over normacilline. There is only one exception when the acute pancreatitis is caused by hypercalcemia, then we can use normacilline actually because the ringer lactate has calcium in it. Okay, next thing to understand about IV fluids is the rate. Previously, there was like aggressive fluid hydration was considered to be best. And patient used to be hydrated like 250 ml to 500 ml per hour. But recently, the studies have shown that it leads to more fluid overload in the patient. So the rate should be 1.5 ml per kilograms per hour for all the patients. So if a 75 or 70 kilograms person that is average uh, in, the, uh, in the hospital for the acute pancreatitis, we need to hydrate that person as like 100 ml per hour. And as far as the bolus is concerned, uh, the bolus should only be given to hypovolemic. Any patient who is not hypovolemic should not get the bolus. And this fluid duration should be at, for 24 to 48 hours. Not, uh, And we need to just like clinically assess these patients. 
on regular intervals. So what should be our targets? Our first target should be the urine output. It should be between 0 0.5 to 1 ml per kilogram per hour. So, but it is tricky. We need to understand uh, if some patients don't have that much of uh, urine output, it can be either that patient is not getting enough fluids, we need to increase the rate of fluid, or that patient can develop acute tubular necrosis as a result of hypovolemia. So if we give that patient higher volume and the urine output still doesn't increase, it means it's very likely that this, that patient has developed acute tubular necrosis. We don't need more fluid in that patient. The second target that we need to achieve, uh, second and third targets, they look for the hemoconcentration. The target hematocrit levels should be between 35 to 45%. And we always target reduction in BUN levels, blood urea nitrogen. If the BUN stays same or it increases, it means we need to increase the rate of fluid resuscitation in these patients. Okay, uh, A for analgesia. So if the patient has mild acute pancreatitis uh, with mild abdominal pain, they can have answers, but most of the patients don't fall into that category. Most, many patients have moderate to severe pain or they have moderate to severe acute pancreatitis. So those patients needs IV opioids like IV fentanyl, IV dilaudid. Uh, if some patient has like kidney issues to get like along with acute pancreatitis, then IV fentanyl is preferred in those patients. So N is for no antibiotics. Uh, you know, the pancreatic patients, they can have high WBCs because of the hemoconcentration. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it is an infection. There are a few exceptions. If the patient develops exapancreatic infection like UTI, pneumonia, or some other kind of infection, then we need antibiotics according to those infections. But if the cultures are negative and if you cannot find any source of infection, then we can stop the antibiotics. We should stop the antibiotics. The second exception is if we suspect infected pancreatic necrosis. That doesn't happen within a few days, but it might take weeks. D is for diuretics only if we need to. Some patients, we overhydrate, like especially the renal failure patients or the cardiac failure patients, if we feel clinically that that patient has a volume overload, then we can use diuretics only in that case. Nutritional is for nutrition, is simple. So we need to answer a few basic questions. When we need to feed these patients. So there is a timeline. If patient has mild Acute pancreatitis, patient does not have any nausea, vomiting, and no ileus, then we can feed that patient on day one. And however, if the patient has moderate to severe pancreatitis, patient still has nausea, vomiting, and cannot tolerate the oral feeds, then we can wait up till day five when we can start the enteral feed. Enteral is not, uh, enteral mean like by the NG or NJ tube. And on the extreme, if the patient cannot tolerate the enteral feeds, or the goal of enteral feed is not achieved within 48 to 72 hours, then the last option is TPN. Another question that comes into the minds that what should we feed the patients? As far as the oral feeding is concerned, we can use low fat, low residue diet because the fat and high residue diet stimulate the pancreas and we don't want that. Previously, the concept was to start from the fluids, but that is not true anymore. We can start from the soft diet. And if we are going for the enteral route on the day five, then we need to use elemental or semi-elemental formulas. What are those formulas, elemental or semi-elemental? They are the like 
amino acids in lipids they are in fatty acids so our pancreas doesn't need to break the lipids and proteins and carbs so they are broken down form of the diet in simple terms and the last option is always parent total parental nutrition from management we need to uh, understand it's from monitoring uh, what do we need to monitor? We already discussed the monitoring of uh, hematocrit and BUN. The other thing that we need to monitor is serum electrolytes, especially the critical time is first 48 to 72 hours. What are the electrolytes that we need to monitor? Is ionized calcium because you know when there is acute pancreatitis, calcium can deposit in pancreatic tissue. So we need to monitor it. And we need to monitor magnesium levels because low magnesium level can also lead to low calcium levels. And phosphate levels. Why phosphate levels? That phosphate level is more important in alcoholic patients because they have depletion of ATP and phosphate levels. Another lab that needs to be monitored is serum blood glucose levels because these patients are very prone to <clears throat> hyperglycemia. There are multiple causes of hyperglycemia in acute pancreatitis patients, especially if the patient is on uh, total parental nutrition and the other causes are low release of insulin and decreased utilization and increased gluconeogenesis. Everything can contribute to uh, in hyperglycemia and we need to monitor that. If patient is hyperglycemic with acute pancreatitis, it can prolong the hospital stay. From CAN, a very important thing is to manage the cause. What is causing the acute pancreatitis? Like the most common cause in the USA is alcoholism. So we need to monitor that patient. And we, if we need SIVA protocol, we can employ the SIVA protocol in those patients. Uh, another important cause is hypercalcemia. As we already discussed, the fluid here will be different. We need to monitor, uh, we need to administer normal saline instead of lactate, And we need to focus on the normalizing the level of calcium level and find what caused the high blood calcium levels. As far as hypertriglyceridemia is concerned, uh, it, its management is totally different. Uh, it sometimes requires uh, insulin infusion. One of the, another important cause is gallstone uh, acute pancreatitis. So <clears throat> it needs a lot of imaging, sometimes abdominal ultrasound, ERCP, MRCP, uh, EUS, and at the end, whether we need we need cholecystectomy either like during the hospital stay or after the acute inflammation is over. Mostly the patient with mild acute pancreatitis, they can have cholecystectomy during that hospital stay, but the patients with moderate to severe pancreatitis, they usually have elective cholecystectomy. Biliary sludge can also cause acute pancreatitis. If we don't know the cause of the biliary sludge, then we can perform EUS for some microlysthesis in gallbladder and bile duct. And from vital, we need to monitor the vitals of these patients. We need to keep in mind the targets. Uh, oxygen saturation in these patients should be more than 95%. If the oxygen saturation drops less than 90%, it can be worrisome. There are multiple causes of low oxygen saturation in these patients, like pleural effusion can develop, ARDS can develop. There are multiple things. So if the oxygen saturation develops less than 90%, we need to perform the ABGs and other investigations if we need to. The target of our heart rate, it should be less than 120. And the target for mean arterial pressure, it should be between 65 to 85 millimeter of mercury. So to summarize the treatment of uh, acute pancreatitis, from fluids we know we need to give this patient IV fluids to maintain the microcirculation. Ringer lactate is preferred and there should be moderate IV fluids, not the aggressive fluid resuscitation. From A, we need analgesics. Mostly we need IV opioids. From N, we need uh, we can remember no antibiotics except for a few exceptions that we already discussed. D, a diuretics as needed if the patient has fluid overload. From nutritional, we need to give this patient nutrition, either oral or enteral or parenteral. 
from management. Uh, these patients need to be monitored for serum electrolytes and serum blood glucose levels. From CAN, the cause management, we have discussed the different causes that can cause acute pancreatitis and we need to manage them. And from vitals, it's vital monitoring. Uh, and we already have discussed uh, the vitals. Thank you for watching the video.